We're at GDC and we're sitting down to learn something about a game called The Church in the Darkness. I find the sort of the setup for this game fascinating, I gotta say, because it's 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 really interesting way of sort of using procedural generation, if you will, in a sort of a narrative sense. But for those who aren't aware, can you tell us what the game is all about? Sure. It's uh, The Church in the Dark Darkness is a top-down action infiltration game set inside a religious cult in the 1970s. Um, but it has a story that changes every time you play. So the Collective Justice Mission is this group, this progressive religious movement in the, in the U.S. It's feeling persecuted by the government, and they have you know, radical ideas about wanting to be socialist and wanting to, to live a certain way. So they all move down to South America to, to build a place there where they can live, and they build a place called Freedom Town. Um, and from this sort of story, people might think, oh, that sounds maybe creepy or weird or whatever. But the interesting thing in all the research I've done about these type of groups and cults is that Sometimes they go, you know, a dark way, and we tend to hear about those in the news and more, but there are lots of other groups that just try to start a commune and try to start something, and maybe it doesn't work out, or, or maybe it succeeds, but we don't hear about those as much, because, you know, we hear about the ones that make the headlines. Um, so this, for this, it was interesting to try to use procedural narrative to, to change the motivations of the cult leaders every time you play. So sometimes they're more apocalyptic and bad things will happen eventually, or sometimes they're just a bunch of socialist people wanting to live in the woods and, and live their own lives. Yeah, and that, that's where you come in because you could sort of, like, as the player, you will sort of have to try and navigate that and right. sort of decide what to do with that. Right, absolutely. The idea is you're, you're this guy uh, or girl, Vic, uh, who's infiltrating Freedom Town to try to check on a relative. Your nephew, Alex, is there. Uh, and his relatives haven't heard from him much. No one knows what's going on. It seems weird that they've moved to South America. So you're trying to get into, the, into Freedom Town, try to find Alex, see if he wants to go or not. Um, and along the way, you find out, is the group you know, more or less dangerous. And then you need to decide what to do with that information. Like if, it's, if they're not dangerous, do you let Alex stay there? Or do you take him out anyway? Or, um, you know, if it turns out the group is dangerous, do you want to do something about it? Do you want to try to stop the leaders uh, while you're in Freedom Town? Very interesting stuff. Uh, how do you sort of treat this subject matter? Because it, it is sensitive in that sense that there is, there is, there are some sort of precedence here in the real life where things have turned really ugly, really bad, uh, and, and these kind of things do sort of, it, it is something that sort of everyone has their idea of. How do you treat that in, in terms of like, do you keep it lighthearted or do you go really dark with it, really sort of serious? Well, I'm trying to base everything on real events as much as possible, but not any one specific group. So it's not a documentary, you know, it's not specifically this group doing this one thing. Because, you know, in a game where things can change, that can be weird if you're yeah. changing these sensitive historical events. So it's a completely fictitious group that's, that's different from any other group that's been out there. Um, but try to keep it serious, but also treat these people as humans, you know, that have failings they're not perfect they're not perfectly evil they're not perfectly good they're you know a mix somewhere in the middle and just trying to tell the story of these people who are there in this situation trying to live a different life right the thing i found researching these groups was that they're not joined by weak people they're joined by really strong people they're joined by people who want to change the world or want to change their own world they see particularly in the world of the 1970s there was a lot of fear of nuclear annihilation and and, and the vietnam war had had um, depressed a lot of people and that sort of thing um, so people want to try something else they're like what we're doing wasn't working we're going to try to do this and it takes a really strong person to have the will to go do that so being respectful of the choice these people are making is not just being a bunch of brainwashed crazy people or something but they're just real people trying to live a different life so looking at it that way both in terms of the research I did and then what's getting uh, getting implemented in the game so that it feels like this is a believable scenario and not just exploitation or something and in terms of the gameplay, what can we expect there? What you know, because you know, some stealth infiltration games is sort of like pretty 
pretty, you know, the, there's a lot of guns and stuff involved as well. What what kind of attack are you taking with that, and what, what kind of gameplay can we expect? Yeah. I mean, they're not a pacifist group, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going into their, their town basically uninvited. So if they catch you, you know, they're going to retaliate. They're going to try to take you down. Um, and and the player, you know, it's classic sort of top-down action infiltration gameplay. So you have a, a space that you're able to look at tactically and figure out what you want to do. But you're given full choice of how you play. You know, you can play really carefully and avoid detection completely. Um, you can use non-lethal methods to take down guards and things like that. Or you can just kill people who get in your way. And that, that may be the most expedient in some ways, but it'll have negative uh, gameplay and narrative repercussions. Hmm. Will they always be negative? I mean, I guess if it's procedural, sometimes maybe that's that's the best way to go. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have, like, if you're going in and, and playing it like you would a traditional shooter or something and just shooting everyone in the camp, the camp is going to go into high alert and stay that way, and it's going to be much harder to get farther through the game. Mm -hmm. But I'm not also making a game where you shoot one guy and suddenly the camp's like that forever. So yeah. there's going to be stages to it where it's going to react to the way you're playing, but if you're being completely homicidal, you know, the game's going to get harder because everyone's going to be freaked out all the time. All right. Cool. So uh, in, in terms of the development, where, where are you at with the game right now? Sort of so we've been working on it for about a year and a half. Um, I think we're, we're aiming to be done in early 2017. Um, and we've got, you know, a lot of the game systems working and, and uh, a lot of the, the sort of the narrative elements working. But obviously we're still building out the world and still iterating on, on the play and balance and stuff like that. So lots still to do, but, but we're really jazzed about where it's at so far. Cool. And... Um, in terms of uh, of, uh, of the narrative and, and the sort of the procedural nature of it, sort of, do you, do you because I can I can see there being sort of a point to sort of the, the first playthrough is going to be like a little bit like this, so that the player gets that experience, or is it going to be completely random? What kind of scenario you you set, set up with <laughs> first, or? I mean, that's something we haven't completely decided yet. Um, but it is a game where you're going to fail a bunch of times, you know. And when you when you die in the game, it does, you know, reset, right? So that, you know, it's we have a unique design to the permadeath we have, so it's not too unforgiving. But it is also real stakes that if you fail too many times, you have to reset. And that resets not only, like, where all the guards are and where the equipment is that you might find and where, where the person you're looking for is in the camp, but it also resets the narrative. So you don't know this time, are they good? or bad or not so um really kind of keeps you on your toes with each playthrough interesting i i think it's especially the thing with procedural that it actually affects the narrative as well is something that it's not been explored that much in, in video games and it's a very interesting approach yeah that was definitely what got me interested in it you know going back to the reason i got into games in the first place is that i really love the medium where players can make choices and see the consequences of those choices and then try something else and see different consequences. And a lot of narrative games that have choices in them, it's, it can either be, you know, there's a few ways to approach it. There are some where it's like the good choice and the bad choice and you kind of decide, do I want to play evil or play good? Then there's games that have really difficult decisions, like The Walking Dead was really good at this, that these decisions are not good or bad, it's just which one do I think I should do? But it's still in most of them every time you play the game, it's still the same choice. So if you're going to go back and replay it, you're really just making you're forcing yourself to make the opposite choice just yeah. to see the other content or whatever, right? Here, you're making the opposite choice because the whole situation has changed, right? And it's not just, I want to see the other stuff, but it's now, it's the narrative is actually different. So I want to make the other choice. So when you go back and replay, you can still play according to what you want to do and still see more of the game that way. It's interesting because, I mean, I guess, I guess when you're role-playing something, a situation like in The Walking Dead, I find it kind of difficult to replay it because I'm, I'm playing as this role that I'm taking yeah, on and I would have to, have to be a different role to sort of play it differently right, right. Um, or else you have to take yourself out of that situation and just game the game, if you will. Right. Uh, but in this case, I can role play with the sort of the same kind of guy or character in my mind, but the situation is different, so I will react differently to, to the sort of things that happen exactly and i think you'll go back and you'll see totally different scenarios and get a totally different ending and feel you know is this ending a good ending or a bad ending it's not it's not one of those like oh did you get the good ending or did you did you save everyone this way or that way it's like well did you do this is this is what you managed to pull off in this scenario and maybe it wasn't an ideal and that'll make you want to go 
back and replay it, but you don't have to play the whole thing just to make some different choice at the end. It's just the c continuum of choices you're making all along the way. And you've made some announcements regarding platforms as well. You're coming out on PC and PS4? Yeah, so we're doing uh, PC and Mac, uh, and we're also doing PS4 and Xbox One. So we've got a number of platforms. Yes. Lots of people will be able to play it. Uh, and it was early next year? Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're shooting for early next year. We haven't locked in like the exact order of when those platforms would come out or, or anything like that, but uh, that's, that's what we're saying right now. Thank you so much for your time. Cool. It's great to talk to you.